Yeah, good to have you back tonight. Yeah, yeah, I knew that was coming. Come on, Joe, sing with us. Do what? <laughs> No, not one. No, not one. <laughs> You're terrible. Page 609. Let's turn to that. No, not one. You don't want to play, Johnny? Don't feel like Good as paid. Yeah, we ought to tell you what. Good as paid. 609. No, not one. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, no, not one, no, not one. None else could heal all our soul's diseases, no, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles, he will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly no, not one, no, not one. No friend like him is so high and holy. No, not one, no, not one. And yet no friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. Did you ever say find his friend forsake him? No, not one, no, not one. Or sinner find that he would not take him? No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. Was there a gift like the Savior given? No, not one, no, not one. Will he refuse us a home in heaven? No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Don't hear that. <laughs> Man, that just makes me happy. Did it, y'all? Good. No, no, no. <laughs> no, not, no one. not one. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay then. That is fun. I love some bluegrass, and that sounded a little bluegrassy to me. Just a little bluegrassy. <laughs> I guess we'll have a word of prayer. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be good. <laughs> Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day, for the privilege that you give us of worshiping and gathering together as your children. Lord, we just, uh, we bless your name tonight. Ask you to speak to our hearts through music and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. We went to the nursing home this afternoon, and there was 22 of us there all together, counting our group and uh, right. The residents that were there and uh, some of these folks are just there and uh, this one old black lady bless her heart she couldn't hardly hear and and Linda goes over to her and says will you sing today and she said what <laughs> and she kept asked her three four times and somebody finally told her you'll have to get out in her ear and I said, so <laughs> <laughs> Linda J Linda breathed in her I ear, Jerry, her ear. and uh, anyway, she asked her if she had sang uh, Swing Low, Sweet Cherry, and this... She sung it last time, so She I did, and, 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 and her voice is just real high, real high, and she sung about three she verses did. of it, didn't she? Said she yeah. Was out of breath, though, yeah. she? Yeah, yeah, she quit. 
Let's turn to page 769. Oh, that will be. Glory for me. It is little print. When all my labors and trials are Almighty 
Reminds me of a family reunion. Uh, on my dad's side of the family, whenever there was a family reunion to get together, everybody on that side of the family was very musically inclined. Uh, he had, dad had uh, cousins and uncles that were all ministers of music in different churches. And so when and there was always a pianist that was available to play, and, and it was getting together it was uh, uh, that was became a song fest and that's that reminds me a lot of that uh let me pray for us and we're going to talk uh, just a, for a few minutes tonight about uh, give you a heads up we're going to talk about submission so be thinking what's it mean what's what's yeah emerson's fault this is emerson's fault yeah no it's not i'm teasing I'll explain that. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for your love, for your patience, for your blessing of your presence today. Speak to us, Father, as we look at your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, The reason I I was blaming Emerson on this is that uh, Emerson is getting ready to go to Nicaragua in just a couple of weeks, matter of fact. And uh, one of the things that they're going to be doing is, uh, Linda's got her questions already. but one of the things they're going to be doing is they're going to be leading a pastor's conference while they're there. And part of the pastor's conference is they're going to be uh, leading a conference for the wives. Is that right, Emerson? I'm, I got that right. And uh, uh, he'd asked a few of, of our ladies in the church to, uh, if they would allow him to interview them. And so I think that's still in the works. And uh, uh, some of the questions have to do with submission. So let me just ask you, What's the first thought when you hear the word submission in, in Bible put together in terms of scripture or, or references? What's the, the first reference of, that speaks to submission that, you, that pops in your mind more often than any other? And I, I, I'm, I'm, This is a loaded question because I've got an answer I'm, I'm looking for, so I hope, you, hope whoever's got it. There you go, there you go. That, it, 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 and that's, uh, it's found in several parts of Paul's writings. And what she said was, uh, wives be submissive to your husband and, uh, or submit to your husband. And uh, I can see I'm making people mad already. <laughs> Go ahead, <Joe>. No. <laughs> Somebody's going to get hit here in a minute. I don't want... No, now, that's not what we're going to talk about, though. So <laughs> let me go ahead and clarify. Is we're not going to we're 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 not going to focus on that passage of scripture, although it's it's uh, uh, deals with wives as women. There's Ephesians five twenty two, First Corinthians fourteen thirty four, Colossians three eighteen, Titus two five, and First Timothy two eleven. So it's it was well versed. Uh, by Paul uh, in that regard, but there is uh, another verse of scripture found in 1 Peter chapter 5, Uh, that's not the one we're going to look, we're going to look at it, but that's not the one we're going to focus on tonight, we're going to eventually get to the book of James, if you can go ahead and put your thumb in the book of James, 1 Peter chapter 5, and I believe it is... Verse 5, and I need somebody to read it to me in, in a King, uh, New King James Version or a version other than NLT. 1 Peter 5, 5. What's it say? Likewise, 
Okay, did you catch that? It says all of you, first of all, it says you young people, submit yourselves to your elders. And then it comes back and says, he quantifies it even more. He says all of you submit to one another. And uh, I, I have, a, I have a, a, a premise I want to present to you tonight is that I believe that before we can submit to one another and before if we were to fully address what the scripture says about why the relationship between wives and husbands, before that can occur, I think true submission begins that uh, we have to submit ourselves to God. And that's, that's where I want us to focus tonight. And so with that understanding, help me understand what you believe the word submissive or to submit means. What would be uh, an understanding if somebody was asked you, what do you mean by submit? Anybody? Exactly. Is you're yielding to the authority of another individual. And uh, uh, matter of fact, that's actually the, the verbatim dictionary definition. And uh, you looked it up, didn't you? Some point in time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you wrote it. That's it. You wrote the dictionary, didn't you? I always thought you. You tap out. You submit. You yield to their their strength or their on. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you, I want you to understand that that's that's where we're going to look at in, in in James. If if you accept that definition of submission. And uh, uh, what we're going to talk about, and it's just very, very brief tonight, looking at basically seven, James is probably one of the most practical books in the New Testament in terms of practical Christian living. And how do we submit ourselves to God? How do we yield to his authority? It's I, I would venture to say, I don't know about you, but I don't know that I was born with a very submissive nature. And if you stop and you remember maybe your childhood or your children's childhood uh, uh, or your grandchildren, uh, children by nature are not, they, especially when they go to that independent stage, you know? You, do you remember? What's the... What's the three words that a, a preschooler will declare when they're in that independent stage? No. I do it. I do it. I mean, that's what they, they, they you, you, you try to help, you try to get them to yield to your authority. And they declare that, you know, this independence and I think that we're each born with that nature that declares our independence even from God in so many ways. But there are, there are a, some ways that James points us to uh, in chapter 4, book of James, beginning in verse 7. Uh, he gives us basically what I, I think are seven practical ways of being submissive to God. Okay? Uh, again, yielding to that authority, also with the understanding that ultimately in Scripture we're to also be submissive to one another, yield to the authority of others. And uh, one of the words that you'll discover uh, as I read this is uh, uh, that it's used interchangeably uh, with the concept of submission uh, deals with the aspect of humility. Humble yourself. And uh, verse 7 in the NLT, that this is what I'm reading from, it says, so humble yourselves before God. Humble yourselves before God. In the New King James Version, it says, I believe, so submit yourselves to God. That's idea of submission to God or yielding to His authority. So again, that aspect of humility and humbling yourselves to God uh, is, is, is at the very heart and the essence of, of true submission to God. So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Hey, that's a good thing, isn't it? How do you resist the devil? Let me ask you that. We'll interject that for just a second. 
Sir, submit to God. Uh, is Isaiah, is Isaiah uh, he will keep in perfect peace those whose mind and thoughts are fixed on him. And that's that aspect of submitting to God, keeping us our focus is on God, and when our focus is on God, it's a whole lot easier to resist the devil. So it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Uh, Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves, there it is again, before the Lord, and He will lift you up in honor. All right, it says uh, also, let's, yeah. It says, don't speak evil, verse 11. Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you're criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Basically focusing in, in verses... Well, part of it comes in that very last section as well. But let me give you the first way, uh, practical aspect of uh, submitting yourself to God or humbling yourself to God. And it's the very first thing that he says in verse 8. He says, come close to God. Jerry, how close to God do you want to be? I knew it. If you heard Jerry said. He'd like to be close enough to feel his breath. In, in discipleship training tonight, we're talking about the breath of God. And, and if you know, can you, you, you've had, you ever had somebody walk up behind you and lean over and uh, you, can, you can feel the, the heat of their breath or uh, I won't say the odor of their breath, but you can, feel, you can feel the fact that somebody's right there next to you. That's a closeness. You know, how do you get close to God? How do you... How do you draw close to God? How do you come close to God? Spend time with Him. Or do I, do I, don't I have to know where He is if I'm going to spend time with Him? These are, pra- these are easy questions. Yeah, you do. You need to know where He is. Where is He? If you've got a relationship with God, where is He? He's, he's inside you. He's right there with you. So you don't have to travel far, do you? You just got to stop and reflect and look inside and look here. Spend time with God. Spend time with God's Word. Read His Word. Talk to Him. <laughs> and then the, other, the flip side of that is listen to Him. Listen to Him. I know there's been a lot in the news lately in uh, reference to uh, the vice president making reference to the fact that uh, or someone belittling the vice president for saying that he uh, listened to God. He heard the voice of God. Acted on the voice of God. Yeah. And the world misses it. And the world doesn't understand it. But you who are here tonight, you have an understanding. You know what that means. You know that to hear God's voice, you've got to be in the Word of God, and you've got to be close to God. And, and I love, I love the, the aspect of thinking in terms of, I want to be so close to God that I feel His breath. And you know, if, if that was a desire, then what are some of the things that I might do in order for, to do that? Make certain that I'm, 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 I have a daily time where I spend with God. And my guess is, as many of you, many of you here tonight, are, and that's, that's a part of your life, a part of your, your design for your day, is that not only is there a quiet time that may be a, uh, uh, you know, it could be a few minutes up to several hours, or it could be that simply that you're in that constant conversation with God throughout the day as you go through. And you recognize God's closeness as he's there with you. Think about him. Pray to him. Listen to him. 
And uh, uh, so coming close to God brings some results. What does it say in Scripture that happens? If you, if you make the move to come close to Him, what's going to happen? He's going to come close to you. Guess what? God will breathe on you. You'll get close enough. God will breathe on you. And as we learn tonight, when God breathes on you, you experience something wonderful. It's called life. Life. It's the Spirit of God. Second thing that he talks about here is that uh, he, he, says, he says, wash your hands. Well, you know, <laughs> first thought is, a lot of us are washing our hands these days because of the flu. Every chance you get, anybody carry hand sanitizer around with them? Keep it. You know, you go in and out of the hospital, they got them right there by the doors. You know, and they make sure, that if, especially if somebody's back in uh, ICU or CCU, then they, you got to wash them. And you've got to wash your hands. What is the implication of washing your hands? What does it mean? Uh, What's the, if, if, if part of my submissiveness to God is to wash my hands, what does that imply? Repentance, okay? That you're dirty, absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah, what was it uh, uh, Peter said when Jesus went around and started washing the feet? Peter told him, he said, you're not going to wash my feet. He said, well, if I can't wash your feet, you can't have anything to do. He said, well, don't wash my feet. Wash, me, wash my whole body. You know, and he said, it's, it's, that's not what's dirty. But there is, there is this aspect of purity, of coming before the Father. Uh, in, in other words, be careful with your actions. Uh, be mindful of the result of your actions, your thoughts, and what that has to do, your thoughts, your deeds, and, and what that has to do with your presence before the Father. Uh, it says, come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. And here's what he's saying about washing your hands. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Anybody struggle with that? Loyalty that's divided between God and the world. I think all of us do. You know, it's, you know I, I, I look around the room, I don't see anybody here that I believe that does not truly love the Lord. I believe you all do. But the, the world has you know, those moments in the world where the world tastes good, smells good, feels good. And it's easy to get lost in the things of the world and the pleasures of the world. And it, has a, it can have a, a direct impact on, on the result of your relationship and your willingness to submit, again, yield to the authority of God. And so, purify your hearts. And it uh, goes on, is, that's the third thing, purify your hearts. In other words, watch what you think. I want you to notice that James describes those who don't have a pure heart. I think in, in, the, NL, uh, in the New King James Version it says you're double-minded. Double-minded. That's a person who shows all the behavior of a Christian, yet their minds dwell on sinful thoughts that are not pure. And it's, it's this outward appearance, but there's not an inward change, or an outward appearance, but there's a stronger inward influence of the enemy, uh, and you know, in order to be pure, your thoughts need to be pure. That's uh, purity begins uh, is going to be the source from from your thoughts because, and that's where sin begins. Sin begins in our mind, moves to our heart, moves to our actions, and so wash your hands, watch out what you do, purify your hearts, watch what you think, and then he says. Basically, he says, uh, my version says, let the tears, let there be tears for what you've done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Can I tell you, when I read that, sounds absolutely depressing. Absolutely depressing. And I, and I think, why in the world would I want to do any of that? Why in the world would I want to, 
to cry, cry over, over what I've done and express sorrow and grief, but why would I want to experience that? What is, what's the, the general, what's another way of, of saying what, he, what, what, uh, what James is trying to say here? Broken, being broken, mourning, grieving, what? Over your sin. Now, if, if, if the description of drawing close to God, the, the instructions, the practical aspect says that we should wash our hands, that we should purify our hearts, and that and recognize the sin in our life, and then be sorrowful for it. What's the word lament mean? Does anybody know? Cry out? To be sorry? Lamentation. That's where it came to lament, is to be sorrowful for your actions, for your thoughts, for your deeds. You know, <laughs> that's a word we don't use. It's not, we don't use it as, as part of our vocabulary, but it's one of those words that's Got a lot of dust on it on, on the shelf, but it's it's got a lot of depth to it. it especially in, 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 in this relationship with God is to be sorrowful to the point that there is grief that's being expressed. Can I tell you being sorrowful to the point where you weep? I won't ask you to, to, to show hands, but I, I I want to ask you just to think, have you ever stopped and wept over the sin in your life? When God brought and recognized, you recognized the sin that was there, that God took you to a point of where you realize that that has separated you from the ability to draw close to Him. I have. I've been there. And <laughs> can I tell you, there's, there's, I want get, to get, make sure that you understand the good thing about the tears. When there is mourning over over sin and grief over sin, what can I tell you? What tears do? <laughs> they bring about a cleansing and a freedom, especially if you confess and repent and turn away from the sin. That's the cleansing that comes through this experience of of drawing close, submitting ourselves to God. Submission to God is seeing the sin in our lives in the same manner that God sees it. I don't know about you, that's, that's, that's tough to think about. And then it goes on, so we've got uh, come close to God, He'll come close to you, wash your hands, purify your hearts, mourn, over your sin. And then the next one is uh, to humble yourselves. Humble yourselves before the Lord. It says, instead of gloom, instead of joy, or instead of laughter and gloom, instead of joy, laughter and gloom instead of joy, sadness instead of laughter and gloom inst instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord. How do you do that? How do you humble yourselves? before the Lord. Can I tell you, it's, it begins by recognizing who God is and who you are. And when you recognize who God is and recognize who you are, you'll see a very distinct difference. God's up here, and I'm way down here. There's a big difference between who God is and who I am. Submission to God is to realize who God is and who you are not. I've told you, I think I've told you since the day I, I, I first came here, is that I believe that the foundational issue that we struggle with as believers today is based on uh, the number one truth that, that Terry and I have taught for a number of years is that God is God and you're not. We step in and we try to take over and try to, assume the responsibility that God has and make the decisions and make the choices that, that God should instead of allowing God to do it. And uh, that, <laughs> when God is not God in your life, you can't draw close, you can't submit, 
you're not submitting, and you're not drawing close to him. So humble yourselves. Uh, and it also says that when you do, there's, there's a, a response that comes from God. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and it says he will lift you up in honor. He will lift you up in honor. In other words, we need to let God be God, and we need to realize that God is in control. God is in control. It goes on, that was the fifth one, humble yourselves, uh, mourn over your sin, purify your hearts, wash your hands, come close to God. The sixth one is this, it says, do not speak evil, verse 11. Do not speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. You know, it's not enough that we're not to think evil, we're not to speak it either. We're not to talk it, it's our language is so important. Uh, we're not to talk about each other, fellow Christians, uh, especially talking bad about somebody. Uh, James says don't judge fellow Christians and don't judge God's word, but he says this, the seventh thing is to obey what God says, obey the law. And that's in the latter part of the last verse, he said, but your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. Be obedient to the law. And, and that corresponds with the, the verse in James chapter 1, verse 22, that you're probably familiar with. It says, be doers of the word uh, and not hearers only. Uh, in other words, take and be obedient to the word of God, not just listen to the word of God, not just Look at the Word of God, not just read the Word of God, but put it into action in your life. Uh, so with that, let me ask you this. How much of God's Word should you strive to obey? Shelby said a little bit about this one. All of it. Oh, that was, a, that was a, all of it. That's absolutely right. Uh, how many of the commandments should you try to follow? All 13, Linda said. They're not suggestions. We should strive for, here's the word, holiness. Holiness. God says, be holy for I am holy. He set the standard and he set the example. So how about it? Submitting to God, is it easy? It's a challenge. And it requires an intentional effort on our part. An intentional effort on our part to submit ourselves to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. So let me challenge you with that tonight. You've heard the word and you've heard some practical application of Scripture. Now the challenge that each and every one of us face when we walk out of this place and the week that lies before us is to put it into action. Draw close to God. Purify your heart. It's all there. Father God, we thank you for your truth. We thank you for what you challenge us to, Father, that you also promise us with. You challenge us to draw close to you, and you promise us that if we do, that you'll draw close to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, that you have provided a way, and that way's name is Jesus. Bless us, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing 657. Would you stand? <laughs>